evaluate the line integral for the following potential function and oriented curve C using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So to get us started here, let's recall that fundamental theorem of line integrals. So if we have that our vector field is a conservative vector field, then we can rewrite this line integral in terms of the gradient of its potential function phi. And by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we know that this leaves us with just that potential function parameterized in terms of your curve from A to B. And it's simply the endpoints of the curve. So looking at what we're given here, we already have our potential function phi. We just need to reparametrize it in terms of vector r of t. So we'll start there. So let's note that we are given a parameterization of c. So we have this vector r of t in r3. So we have x of t, y of t, z of t. And this is defined here as cosine of t, sine of t, and then t by pi. So now let's go ahead and we'll parameterize our potential function. So we have phi is defined as x squared. So this is going to be in the numerator. We have cosine of t squared plus y squared, which becomes sine of t squared. Hey, there's Pythagorean's identity, plus we have t or z squared, which is becomes t squared by pi squared, and that's all over 2. And so again, this is Pythagorean's identity, so that goes to 1, and we are left with the parameterization 1. Actually, I'm going to pull that 1 half out in front, so we have 1 half multiplied by 1 plus t squared, over pi squared. Again, this is such that we have our endpoints here for t that we just plug right in. We have that t is greater than or equal to 3 pi by 4, less than or equal to 7 pi by 4. So this is the parameterization of our potential function, and we're ready now to go ahead and apply the fundamental theorem. So by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we have the following. So again, we know that the integral of the gradient of phi, or the integral over C of the gradient of phi, dotted with the differential d vector r, is going to be that parameterization evaluated between the endpoints. So plugging what we just found in, we have 1 half multiplied by 1 plus t squared over pi squared. And we're now ready to evaluate from 3 pi by 4 to 7 pi by 4. So here we go. Keeping 1 half on the outside here, we have 1 half multiplied by 1 plus, we'll think of this as 1 over pi squared multiplied by 7 pi over 4 squared minus 1 plus 1 over pi squared multiplied by 3 pi by 4 squared. And we've got some nice simplification here. So we end up with 1 half multiplied by 1 plus 1 over pi squared multiplied by 49 pi squared over 16. And I'm going to distribute this negative through while we're simplifying. So this becomes minus 1, minus 1 over pi squared, multiplied by 9 pi squared over 16. And look at all this beautiful simplification here. We have 1 and minus 1 cancel each other right out. These pi, by, or these pi squareds in both the second and fourth term cancel each other out. So we are left here with 1 half multiplied by 49 over 16 minus 9 over 16, and we are so lucky here, we have a common denominator. So I've got 1 half multiplied by 40 over 16, and we have fantastic simplification again. Let's see, we know that 
2 goes into 40 20 times. And we can further simplify. We know that 16 and 20 both have 4 in common. And so 20 becomes, excuse me, not 4, but 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 16 divided by 4 gives us 4. So we are left with a beautiful final answer of 5 fourths.